a nice bath. How was the men's side? Uh, not bad. I feel warmer now. Hmm? Your face is all red. In there too long? Uh, uh, no, um... I feel fine. <sighs> oh! You mind? Help me comb my hair. Can I? Yes, please. Be careful, okay? I can't contain it. Oh. Mm. You know something, Velvet? Your hair is really beautiful. Oh. You know, that power that I have... If I could master the Silver Flame... I might be able to turn you back into a human. A human, huh? If we ever had a chance to start over, I'd love to cook for you every day. My quiches are much better than anything they sell in the stores. Okay, then I'll fetch the water and chop the firewood. <laughs> All by yourself? Of course! I'm gonna get a lot taller soon. And I'm gonna get stronger, too. Yes, you will. I know you will. Great! Then I'll start looking for a way to master- No. Uh. It's too late. I've made too many sacrifices. Too many to ever come back from. I can't. But, Velvet... Even worse, I haven't stopped. I'm willing to sacrifice others to keep going forward. If we kill Inomi not. What will happen to the Therians who are part of him? Will they return to normal? Well... It's likely that they'll all die. I know it. I dug my own grave. But what about Kamoana and Medissa? Uh... More importantly, what about you, Fee? You are connected to him. Uh... I know I might die if I go through with this, but still I have to do it. Even if it means I have to sacrifice. Everyone that I know, even you who saved me. The Lord of Calamity isn't a demon lord. She's just a selfish, horrible girl. I have something to confess. <laughs> I... I don't like being called Fee. I really don't. <gasps> I think that name's too childish. Luffy said the same thing to me. I'm sure that he did. Velvet, you really don't understand boys at all. Yeah, you're right, I'm sorry. It's okay. Forgive you. <laughs> Thank you, Luffy said. Is Velvet in there? Uh, y yeah, but now's not the best time. I'm here. Dry up. Break time's over. The Leggets have arrived. Another Scarlet Night. Losing your nerve, Velvet? I think not. Don't worry. Leave Shigure to me. 
Where's Kurogane? Here with me. Kurogane and I will cut Shigure down. And Aizen. Sorry, but Melchior's mine to eat. Got it? Got it. But at the very least, you're gonna let me watch. Magilu, you do whatever you want. Go nuts out there. I'm always nuts! Benwick, when you see your chance, take the others back to the Von Eltia and await orders. Aye, aye. Luffy said. Let's go. Eleanor, keep Luffy set safe, please. I will. Worry not. Let's move. We go to kill the Exorcist Legates and engulf this world in the flames of chaos. See you soon, Kay! Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Tales of Berseria. I am Wishblade, and all of that is just all the wonders in the world. For we are ready to get to Mount Killer House after some preparations and talking and stuff, because that's the way of the world. But yes, we are now gonna make our way to Mount Killer House. Once we are done here in Meshio, which isn't as annoying as it was before, clearly, with the awesome, amazing, morale-boosting music, it's so wonderful. First order of business is I this. Knew this would be big. What a treasure! Eye of Atamoni, at Atamoni statue, a sculpture found in the Sordian Peninsula. A large-scale version is said to have been located in a floating city. And new skill. Oh yeah, I'm fairly certain I haven't looked at those. So, first and foremost this. And then, some of this stuff. Uh, I'm fairly certain we've I've looked at that. I think. I think. Otherwise, there you go. And fortune telling. She's serving a small rare food rate up. And dispatch time down. Oh yeah. And treasure. Um, you know what? I'll be looking at that. In a little moment, I'll be talking to all these, these people in a little moment. Don't worry, Kamawana. There's nothing to fear here. Fear? Are you scared about something, Medissa? You can tell me about it. I'll listen. It's just us here, and my lips are sealed. Everyone knows I'm good at keeping secrets. <laughs> all right. I guess I'll tell you. All right. Go on. Velvet and her friends left to go fight one last battle. It's a really important fight. For you, for me, and for everyone in the whole wide world. How important is it? More than I can even imagine. And right now, nobody knows how it'll go. Or what will happen afterward. That sounds scary. It is. That's why I was thinking of praying for you to be safe, sweetie. No matter what happens. But it just feels strange to do that. Strange? Why? Well... My god was someone who'd take away the feelings of those who prayed to him. <laughs> That's silly. Wouldn't he get lonely if he had nobody to pray to him? Yeah, I think he would. I think I understand. Something really big is about to happen and you're worried because you have no one to depend on. Don't worry, I'm right here with you, Medissa. And so are Dial, and Orthy, and Russ, and even the Rhino Stagros. So you're not alone. Kamawana. Or... maybe a kid, a lizard, two dogs, and a beetle aren't much to depend on. No, I think I can count on all of you more than I can that god at this point. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> Better than a god? I'm not sure I'd go that far. But if I'm ever in danger, I know my mom will come rescue me. I know she will, so don't worry about me. You're right. Your mother will protect you. I promise. Yep, I know it. Oh, Kamoana, Medissa. Surely there's some way we can save Kamoana and the others. I couldn't tell you. I just feel like I have to do something for Kamoana. Oh, that is so sweet. 
They were kind of interrupted me though, but it's fine. You're so sweet. Everyone's so goddamn sweet. We'll talk about that in a little bit because first, I am gonna do some some shopping here in Chad and Patty's uh, st student store, which has now moved here to Mexico, apparently. So I will be doing that and generally have a break because I have not had a break between these two episodes. So I'll be doing all of that and then we will continue with the talking and the Mount Kilarau's action. All right, shopping has been done, and let's have a look at some of the things. I've also got some other stuff, apparently. Now this thing, the Helmet Smith Sash, is for getting the shop to level 10. So that's the thing. And I got a bunch of fragments, so I can't really show all the, the new stuff. But I suppose we just have a look in here. Maybe, maybe we can see some of it. There's some Topaz stuff, some Mithril stuff. Some other kinds of stuff, although I have bought it, so really, maybe you can't properly see it, but here is the people. This is how they are looking right now. So, there you go. Some of them got a little bit of boosting in the amount of enhanced stuff they have equipped. So that's a thing. Now, we have some more events to view before we go to Mount Killer House. Yes, indeed. One of them being right in here, Grimoire. Hey, teacher. You managed to decipher what the ancient book had to say about Inominat's awakening, didn't you? Right after we escaped from Titania, yes. I'm just sorry it wasn't of much use to you. Oh, come on, Grim. I'd say it turned out all right. That's not for you to decide. You're not seriously blaming Grim for all that. No, I'm not. But I'd still like to know anything more specific about Inominat. Please, tell us what you've learned. All right. What Inominat means to fully awaken isn't a large quantity of malevolence, but rather the quality of it, in eight types. Specifically, he needs despair, hatred, greed, conceit, lust, obsession, cowardice, and selfishness. If each was assigned to a single Therian, then Velvet would be hatred and Kamawana greed, right? Medissa would be conceit, Teresa is lust, and Orthrus... Obsession? And cowardice for Griffin. That leaves the Rhino Stagros with selfishness. But Artorius was trying to steal despair from me. How does that fit in? Eight types of malevolence and only seven Therians. It definitely doesn't add up. Whatever the case, it seems obtaining this eighth malevolence is the final obstacle before Inominot's full awakening. I see. That would certainly explain Artorius' behavior. His plan was to foster profound hatred within Velvet, before plunging her into despair. And he used her brother to do it. If that's true, gathering all the Therians served a greater purpose. Right now, the Abbey has no means to collect despair. But with Teresa dead, shouldn't a new Therian have taken her place? Yeah, but after we killed her, the Abbey still went out of their way to try to capture me. That must mean they haven't been able to secure the new Therian. And even if they did, it wouldn't have despair. That's a good point. Artorius spent three long years trying to foster the despair within you. If that is indeed the specific type of malevolence Inominat needs, it must not be something one can find overnight. Right. We need to attack while there's still time. Indeed. Yet... Is something troubling you? Yes. It comes down to the very idea of quality where malevolence is concerned. When you talk about the relative quality of something, what you're really talking about is its purity. That would mean that Therians pick out and devour this pure malevolence. Yeah. But malevolence by its very nature is impure. Therefore, for some person or creature to become a Therian... They'd need to be responsive to a purity of impurity. Surely few could ever meet such a stringent criterion. So we don't need to worry so much? Oh, but I think I know someone who fits that description. Perhaps a certain succession of top exorcists who have tried to suppress and purify the spread of malevolence. You don't mean... It's just a concern. For now, at least. What are you talking about, Grimoire? What are you talking about? I don't know, but I also know that I have an expedition that, goddammit, d pads up going down there. Boom! Swimwear for Eleanor! Alrighty then! 
And we still need more things, obviously, because we need the ne we need the next area, which is also, if I'm show them how if I recall correctly, the final area. Oh my goodness, we are almost done with the expeditions. Well, we can still do them for items and everything, but still, kind of done. Now, sir, Mr. Pirate Man, what do you have to tell me? A merchant friend who works with the Abbey told me about this one weird class four island. Some exorcist went there, and when they came back, they were laid up in bed, having awful nightmares and saying strange things in their sleep. What sort of things? Stuff like the walls moving and attacking them. Fairies flying in front of them. All kinds of weird. Couldn't those just be demons they saw there? Hey, I ain't done. Towards the end, they were talking about not wanting to see people's backs, that they hated them. They hated backs? What could that mean? I don't know. That's what makes it so strange. Maybe they saw the back of some demon on the island, and they don't want to be reminded. Your guess is as good as mine. But if you do decide to go, you'd best watch your backs. Well, all right then. Another class four island. We'll deal with that later for right now. We gotta go. If only I could just use my power to seal Enominot. Looks like you're raring to go, eh, Lafayette? Just don't be too eager to help, okay? You've got a bad habit of trying to play the good guy. Oh no, I'm not a good guy. I'm a selfish, wicked little boy. Oh, is that so? But if you acknowledge your own selfishness, then it's something you've chosen for yourself, right? Yeah. Then we have that in common. Now, all that's left is to follow your own creed. Only that. Besides, I'm a demon. Even if you were the worst of the worst, I'd be like, cool. Thanks, Aizen. Thanks, Rokuro. <sighs> Velvet. Don't give up on Lafayette set just yet, okay? So, you were eavesdropping on us at the inn. Heavens! I never knew a Praetor to be so utterly shameless! Uh, all right, I was. But that's not what I'm trying to say here. What I'm trying to say is... I know. No matter how selfish you are, life's empty without anyone to share it with. Correct. She's got a point. More than anything, I don't want to give up. Not on myself. Oh, you guys, you're so cute. You're so wonderful. And there was, I guess, the... The, um, the boys are talking about stuff before the final battle skit, and the girls talking about things before the final battle skit. Also, hello. I see something. What is it? Is it collectible that's, hot, that's hidden underground? Maybe, I don't know. Either way, we have an event over here as well. Also, potentially battle with new music. So let's see if we can get that, shall we? Come over here. Yep, yep. Hey, boar. Boar. God damn it, boar. I will you not come over here. Come over here.
And there we go, Tales of Cilia 2, and we got something new, Hyper Velocity Boots. Alrighty then. Well, enjoy that, guys, I guess. Also, considering that's another, another kind of victory pose thing that I haven't seen either. So I'm guessing maybe each character does have their own kind of unique victory pose quote thing. Just like Laffy said had no mercy, Rookro had that one. I'm guessing that's the the reason, although with the one Laffy said used, that was Eisen's music playing technically, I think? Maybe? Or was it yours, Laffy said? I think it was Eisen's, but I can't remember. Either way, maybe there's something, maybe something along those lines. <coughs> what is all this? <coughs> oh, calm down. It's just steam. Really? Oh, I get it. Mount Killeros is melting the bottom of the glacier. Of course, of course. The heat and the cold are engaged in a feudal war. Just like someone I know. Why not worry about the path you're taking? The path I'm taking? Oh, hot! Wait, beneath this ice... ...is boiling hot water. How can you be so calm right now? One false step and we're poached! Probably. If you don't slip, you won't die. For the Reaper, you're certainly optimistic. <laughs> Where's that famous apathy of yours today, Mogilu? <laughs> Who cares about apathy? Especially when I got friends as depraved as you! Well, isn't it just wonderful? The ice could maybe melt and then we fall right down there! That sounds like fun, right? Right, there's a chest over there. There's a chest over there, but I need to go this way. Also, dangerous encounter, maybe? You guys are no fun at all. Why won't you ever cooperate with me? Yeah, bastards is what you are. I guess I'll just take this herb, some rosemary. Fine, I'll take the rosemary and I'll take the chest too. Not your chest, but this chest that you're guarding. Because I'm so angry with you. I'm so angry. Soul bottle, how lovely. Now, let us go this way because, like I said, what, two episodes ago? There was an area of the Geiberg Ice Fields that we could not get to, where there must have been two more chests. Yes, it is right up here. We shall go and find it, and also find a certain someone. Someone very special, a code red, the crystal over there. Also, potentially more dangerous encounters, so we'll have to deal with those as well. We will have to do this as well. Thank you, give me that. Might be kind, and me through a garden. Okay, cool. Hello, Wolfie. Don't, don't hit me. Don't only hit me if I get into dangerous encounter over here. Then you can hit me. And more new toys was had. It is flashing daggers. Alrighty then. And can I do more dangerous encounters? So far, it does not look like it. Because there's only one enemy, along with the Code Red. So, we will get to chest instead. And then we shall engage the Code Red. Also, Cat's Box. There it is. Thank you for the Void Ring. Very appropriate you give me a Void Ring right now, because it's actually very freaking useful. Oh well. If we opened all of the chests, or boxes, whatever you want to call them, at this point we get Earring on the right. Ooh, so fancy. Because, well, I might as well do it right now. Rokuro, get over here. Engaging the Spectral Crystal. And I need you guys to just focus on the defense. Because... There you go. I won't improve by fighting weak Okay. <laughs> well, that was great. Okay, Lunatic's Vent Tide. All right, cool. Yeah. That was the Spectral Crystal. And I'm not sure I can view it anywhere. Would be kind of appropriate if I could. Do I have something? Um, Code Red Hunts. Um, do you have information on the, 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 the Blood Spring Crystal? Maybe. Do you, do you know things, or do I, can I not view anything there? Probably, maybe not. Enemy book? Do you show up in the enemy book, maybe? Um, I have no idea where, where it would be. Yoo-hoo! Blood spraying crystal, spectral crystal, there you go, okay. Yeah, resists everything, and has very low HP, because basically you can't really do anything to it. You cannot do anything to it, really, so... Usually the tactic is either go down to easy mode where there are no resistances or anything of the sort and then just kick its ass or you get to nullify the damage that it deals to you which is very easy to do with our dear boy Rokuro with his break soul and everything along with 
along with, there you go, 5% chance to nullify elemental, non-elemental damage, all that stuff, blah, 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 something along those lines, and then reflect 7% of that nullified damage, meaning, boom, it blows up in its own freaking face. So that was the Spectral Crystal. One of the more interesting code win hunts. So now you know. Very wonderful. And now we shall make some progress. Yes, we shall go to that Mount Killer House. But you know what? I think we'll do that in the next episode. So thank you very much for watching. And until next time, Velvet, look at me. See you later.